no funny y'all like my motherfucking 25th up until my 28th birthday has not been the best and i don't even really planning to do anything to be honest and i'm not gonna lie i think my 25th was fairly okay me and my friend would y'all like I still call her my friend regardless. I call her my wife. I call her a lot of things. But we get along, but we don't get along, but we get along. So everything was definitely weird and awkward. But for the most part, shit, I know I was turned the fuck up. And that's all that really mattered. Because I'm a all about me type of person sometimes. So with that being stated, I'm handicapped this year. And with the whole pandemic and the whole universe shift change and all the new rules and regulations, people dying and people being kidnapped and people being cremated and people just disappearing. It's so much, so much to handle and deal with. Thank the universe, thank the ancestors, you know, thank the gods, thank the goddesses, you know, thank all the fucking spiritual beings that's out here protecting people protecting my family as best as they can but still karma's karma and being just safe and vigilant and cautious is just a part of being a fucking human i'm handicapped and i'm just trying to figure out like how are single people or older people like doing this all alone i know they got endless fucking money you have to you probably got to a caretaker coming to your house, helping you get around, do stuff. If not, you're probably just sitting in bed all day or sitting in your chair or you're in a sad-ass nursing home or you're in a top-notch nursing home. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I burped. And y'all about to hear me blow my nose because I blow my nose like this. And this is as real as it gets. Ah. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm starting to wake up the fuck tired. Like, I gotta fucking pace back and forth. You know, make sure I remember to get this. Make sure I remember to get that. I gotta book these doctor's appointments. Because they just got cool little stuff. Gidget gadgets that I just don't have. And one day, I'm gonna have those gidget gadgets, you know? But for the most part, I still depend on these people because I just need to know. I just need to know. And they're the only way to really know or give me a good little idea or hint of what's going on. So I'm just saying that I'm stressed out. And how many other people feel as stressed out as I do? If you got children, if you got an elderly person you're taking care of, you know, if you got a spouse that you take care of, how do you feel? And I think you should definitely voice how you feel. Sometimes not necessarily to that individual, of course, because they're probably going through something way worse than you. But I think you should definitely look into talking to your friends and family or getting a counselor because we all need to be heard we all deserve to be heard and it's a lot to get through this i know i'm gonna have better days it, it comes and goes i'm so used to the up and down up and down up and down then you just be stuck at one little level for a second then you go up and then you decrease and then you go back up but it's like god damn like that is a lot like I got to scoot around the house. I got to get my documents. I got to, like, where's my wallet at? I got to do all of this stuff. And then I'm like, dang, I can see if a guy could come over and help me out. And I got to tell him, go over there, this part of the house, and go over there, that part of the house. I got it. Cool. He probably going to want something in return. Maybe he don't want anything in return. But the awkward stares, it's obvious you want something. And I'm not even in the mood for that shit. So why am I even going to sit there and invite them over here so they can help my handicap ass out? Just for some sexual flavors of, and no, 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 no. When I got fucking the stupid ass tax season to fucking work, worry about, I got medical shit I got to worry about. I got fucking education shit to worry about. I'm over here worried about my family members at the end of the day. Like... And you just worried about getting that fucking nut off? 
and I gotta sit here and think about these other four things, like, bro, your priorities to me is like way to fuck off, like way off, the way to fuck off. And people really feel like that we're supposed to be like so sensitive, kind and sweet about it, but it's we are dealing with like top tier grown up shit. <laughs> like it's not how it used to be and it still is how it used to be but it's like it's it can't be like that all the time where it's just like you just want to flirt and all this extra shit and just lay up and just like giggle and like all that new fresh love shit like no bro i don't feel like it and when i do get back in that mode i'm gonna be so fucking happy that i'm all giggly and like I miss you. I want to see you. I never in my life miss nobody. Nobody. Maybe like two people. I'll probably admit it. I'll miss you. I want to see you. Like, And still that was tough as shit to even be saying out my motherfucking mouth. And you think now I'm going to be saying that. And then sometimes I just said it just to say it to be honest. Like you keep telling me. You keep telling me. And I know you want that same love and affection back. And that same word and back. So sometimes I just say it. But that's still boosting your head. Blowing your head up. Like oh my gosh. She. Bruh. I'm just. I was really being nice. I was really being kind. But now you're over here like obsessing over me. And I don't need no one obsessing over me because they're already going to obsess over me. I'm obsessed over my damn self. I'm amazed about me. But do I really need other people? And then their heart is just so crushed and so broken. And then they want to blame me for why they're a hoe now. Or they're so super evil. Or, you know, blame me for your positive outlooks. I'd rather you blame me for, you know what I'm saying, you coming the fuck up. Like, now you got a good job, a better car. You're getting your own place. Like... I don't feel like taking nobody's hand. I don't feel like it. I want you to already know what it is that you want out of life and be working towards it. So you can motivate me to keep doing what I need to do. And we can like just balance each other out and meet each other in the middle. Other than that, if you don't know what the fuck you want, I can literally give you all the hints of what you the what direction you can be going in but it's solely going to be up to that individual to do what the fuck they're supposed to do it's not going to be up to me to keep fucking reminding you like i'm your mother i mean i get that i can be like a mother but i don't want to because if i did want to be a mom i would have been a mom probably by now i mean is it really that hard just get on top of somebody and just ride them until, you know, hopefully you just hurry up and bust a fucking nut. Boom. Got your child. And I could choose to put you on child support, be a single parent, or hopefully you want to teamwork it out. But those are my three options. And really, I got four. So, I'm just saying, these single people, married people... Uh, people with a lot of money that's just buying them everything that they need. How can you do this with no companionship? How could you, like, be handicapped or mentally disabled or, like, even poor? How can you be poor and not want someone else to share the, the, the poverty with? I just don't get it. Like, I'm just so upset right now. I'm just so frustrated with all of the change. I go along with change, but I hate change. I hate change. And I'm not talking about the coins because I love me some coins. But I'm just like, damn. I'm just sitting here like, damn. For the next month, for the next two, three months, my life is resulting in bed. In fucking bed. Sounds like the perfect time to get impregnated. But then fuck no, because who got the money? Who got the money? That's what I'm just, who got the money? When I was taking finances seriously, it was a million dollars. Now we got inflation. You telling me it's two, three million dollars now to raise a child? Who is making that money? Who? Because I'm not asking my mama. I'm not I'm about to be fucking 30 soon. Fucking 30 soon. You telling me I'm asking my mom to help me raise my child? Financially? Not just babysitting, but financially? And we still got a big ass family? 
I don't know about y'all, but I know about me, sisters and brothers. And we all sisters and brothers. I consider everybody my brother and my sister. I shouldn't, but I do. Because that's y'all want to be all biblical about the shit, this, that, and third. You treat your neighbor like you treat yourself and all that extra shit. Guess what? At the end of the day, y'all all my brothers and sisters. But my mama out her coochie had about five of us. Five of us. And then some of those still had children. We have to take on that responsibility. Still, moms don't stop being a mom. Just because their child is 50 and mom is fucking 80, that don't mean that she's not a mom anymore. No. When her 60-year-old child comes to her <laughs> while she's 80, <laughs> she still has to guidance them. <laughs> And if she's not physically, mentally, you know, verbally able to do that, it just probably feels good to that child to know that their mom is still around. But overall, that mom still has to be a mom. And we still have to be a child to our parent now because now she needs us or he needs us, him. Because this can be for mom or dad or it could be for both. We still got to fucking push their ass around. We got to make sure to get to the doctor's appointments. We got to make sure that they eat eating right. We got to make sure that they're using the bathroom. We got to make sure that they're brushing their teeth. Like, you got to make sure that feast don't stink. You got to make sure all of this stuff. You got to make sure their back is okay. You got to make sure all of this stuff is okay. And you think, like... All of a sudden, uh, the circle of life just stopped. No, it don't stop. It keeps on going. And every day, we're supposed to make the best out of it. You take one day at a time. Today is the present. Today is a gift. Today is something freaking awesome to make the best out of yourself for the near future. And the near future is literally tomorrow, the weeks after that, the years after that, and so much more. And I'm just like, I'm stressed out. Like, I'm freaking out. My sinuses is messed up. I have to make an eye doctor's appointment. I'm forever about to have metal in my body. And I love my piercings and shit, but I want to choose the metal. Like, when they put this shit in my, in my arm and my foot, I ain't get to choose titanium. I ain't get to choose, you know what I'm saying, iron. I ain't get to choose that shit. They just bloop, plopped it in there. I could have asked them. I really could have asked them, do you have titanium in the back? I could have asked them that. But in reality, you think they really was going to give me some titanium? You think they was going to put some gold in me? I don't think so. That's a special fucking order. And when I go back to the doctors, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask, is that an option? Is that an option to ask for gold or titanium plates in your body versus just putting some metal shit that I can't fucking see? I can't see it. But I got to live with it now. But once I find out, oh, yeah, I'm going to ask them why they don't get that option. I'm going to ask my doctor. I'm going to ask my orthopedic. I'm going to ask... Because I want to know, is there an option? Do we have a choice? Because we definitely supposed to have a choice. I got to sit here and everything fucking drives you insane. And I don't want to go insane, but I'm going insane, but I'm not going insane. I want to be a motivational speaker. I can't speak to <laughs> I want to be a motivational speaker. I love doing podcasts and stuff. And I slowly fell out of love with that. I want to go back to school. Right now, that's fucking difficult. I need money at least to start a payment plan with them. At least to start a payment plan with them. To even finish my fucking bachelor's degree. Then on top of that, I want my doctorate's degree. And then on top of that, I want to be in the science field on top of that. Do you know how much that's going to take? And then I'm looking at some of this shit talking about some six years. I'm going to be fucking 40 years old. Which is not bad. But god damn. I could have had this shit done by 30. But it's okay though. Life just starts around 40. And I'm going to be a MILF. I think it's just given for most of our females that we MILFing out here. We look too good. The youngins love us. We love the youngins. 
Some of the grandpas ain't putting it down. Some our youth is gonna have more dangling king all day long because they more healthier, they eating different, they moving around. Ladies stay active. Guys eventually don't get that active anymore. Especially with all the video game shit. Like, bro, you need your blood pumping for your dick to work. Period. If you're not active, your dick will stop working. And then you're telling me you beat your dick too? That's going to be a problem. But it's not a problem. Because it's more a mental thing than a physical thing. And as long as you can control it and y'all got a, like a good bond together, you're going to be okay. I don't think females can all the way control their little thing like, ooh, get wet now. Like, eh, I got to think about some shit just like anybody else do. And it still take a minute unless you hit those spots. But I'm just saying, I'm just that, I'm just that stressed out. I'm just that stressed out that we're just literally going through life like this. And it's really sad. It's, it's really sad that I need help. I need motherfucking help. And I can do this shit all by myself in the house. I can't do much outside. I've been, my stomach feel upset. I've been feeling nauseated. I got nauseation pills. I need to clean my fucking stomach out. Just to fill it back up with fucking poor shit. Meaning junk food and shit. Because I was doing fairly okay. Like... My little pimples and stuff come and go because of what I eat. Uh, I can't get up and just go to the grocery store and get the stuff that I want. I got to put in a request. And it's just like... And on top of that... Girl, don't... Like, not yet. It's coming. I'm going to have money coming in soon. But still, the shit is it's on its way. But I don't like to spend unless, you know, it's like on the way in two days, three days. Like, but it's on its way, though. I ain't broke now. Like, I'm sitting on a thousand plus, but I'm still like, shit. Shit. I was on my way to being like a thousand there on my own a little bit. Not too much, but it was enough. Enough that if I wanted to fucking leave the state for a second, I could leave the state, come back. Like, I was on my way. That was last month. <sighs> I don't know why December's is not good for me. I'm really starting to notice that me and December, like, don't get along, bro. I'm not one of those type of people either that be like, oh, I got seasonal this, seasonal that, like, but I think I do. I think I do. Like, I feel bad for myself and I feel bad for so many other people. And then another thing that is fucking blowing my fucking mind is that successful families, smart families, either are a family of doctors different type of doctors family of automobiles different type of manufacturing and you know car lots you know family of restaurants you know every almost every decent good family doctor i mean family of attorney of laws you know what i'm saying everybody made sure they became something i'm just like why i know it's hard to keep up with it and i understand there's some chains some curses still need to be broken we still going through that whole fight but y'all for the next generation if you love to travel love to shop why are you not looking for the highest paying job yeah, I know most of us is fucking building businesses and now y'all making six figures, seven figures, eight figures, 
off of your hobbies, off of working two, three jobs. Kudos. Waiting for vacation time to pop up. Whatever it is, make sure your children, the teenagers, the right now people that's out of college, take your ass to fucking school and go get your ass a trade. Go. There's jobs out here paying a hundred thousand off the rip. You take that money and flip that shit into a business. And flip that shit into housing market. And flip that shit into some more shit, some stocks or something. Flip that shit into a life insurance policy. Now you're damn near sitting on, you took a $100,000 job and turned it to 500000 That's the shit that I be thinking about on a daily basis. But my ass right now can't work. And then on top of that, like I can work, but I can't work. And when I was working, I was only making about 55000 for this year. I'm still missing another 50000 So I was going to have to take that 55000 and flip it into 100000 flip it into 150000 which was hella fucking tough for me. But I was working my way to it. It's a lot. Y'all, make sure y'all put your foot down. Put your foot down and make sure these children do something with their lives. Even if it's getting them a home business, home-based business, it don't matter. At least you're making them do something other than rely on just the jobs that's out there. They said we're losing like 200,000 jobs this year. They said they got the robots and shit moving in. You got fucking robots at the fucking strip club. What the fuck? What are they doing at the strip club? They sweeping the floor. They collecting the money for for the for the dancers. Why? Why? German Ben had fucking police dogs. That was like three years ago, four years ago. America is behind this shit while all this advanced as technology is going on. Technically, yeah, we probably have been the fucking third world country this whole time. Or one of the first world countries. But yet we still getting treated like fucking shit. But we look a lot better than the other countries. Because those countries have been here for a very long time. Those continents have been here long, long time. All of this has been here a long, long time. But you can really tell the ones that have been here a long time. Because you got a canyon. You got this high ass, built ass wall. That nobody can get the fuck over. <laughs> like. Come on on come on i want to be there for the youth i want to be in a classroom hearing their little minds go off and stick into the curriculum you know like i want i want that Cause it's going to help my mind so much and it's going to be able to let me help guide people. Cause it's really not about y'all old motherfuckers. It's not about y'all. Like we still got to take care of y'all and think about y'all, but it's not about y'all. You did your part basically and still doing your part. Basically it's about the youth again, why they're targeting the youth. And then guess what? Our, our our children, our children, African American little Latino babies, our children. They don't got our schools on the news. They don't got our school on the motherfucking news. Talk about their ODing and their have I, we niggas, ninjas, ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, goddesses and gods. We've been getting fucked up for years and we we've been okay we've been okay getting through school like going to work we've been we've been turned up 
none of our schools was ever on the news talking about some oh we about to take the doors off the off the hinges because we trying to get crack the bottom of the the dealers and we trying to keep the children safe and no those are the fucking caucasian privileged ass children over there going through the, like don't know what to fucking do because they need people like us at the end of the day to let them know that everything is going to be okay no matter what the fuck your ancestors did no matter what your mom and dad is going through they just getting started real the fuck early and they don't fucking know and their body can't handle the shit that we can fucking tolerate and i feel bad for those children because at the end of the day, while they're slowly taking away some of these privileged people's rights and their freedoms and shit like that, they still trying to comprehend shit in their mind. I don't even know if people talk to their counselors, how they talk to your guidance counselor. They're a guidance counselor. They're there for academic purposes, but they're there for other reasons. But still, I wouldn't trust them either. Talk to an actual counselor. Tell your mom, tell your dad, you want a mental counselor. To help you digest some of this shit. Or go looking for it on your own. Because if you are at home majority of the time by yourself. Because your mom and dad is working too much. Or your dad is out cheating. Or your mom is out cheating. And they just giving you money. And giving you everything that you want. And you able to just throw parties. And you're just able to come in the house whenever you want. That's not good. It's not healthy. Y'all ass need to like really take your life into consideration and think about yourself and also tell them what it is that you need and you want. And if you're not getting that, bless you. <laughs> make your journal, make your podcast and, you know, become your own author. Don't run away, but because it's just too dangerous out there. So, no, I'm not telling you to do none of that shit because it really don't make shit better. It really don't unless you got fucking you running away with a hundred thousand dollars or some shit like you know what I'm saying. But still then I'm not gonna tell you all the little tricks of the trade because I know it's some people that's real sweet with technology, so y'all can figure that shit out. But I'm just saying you don't have to be ODing in your school bathroom, getting busted, getting your fucking school put on the goddamn news because y'all don't know how to handle the shit. Keep that shit for after school. But at least you did it in school where you could get emergency call for y'all. Like, these parents need to get actively in their life. Think about pushing them onto family business or whatever. It's going to make everything okay. And it's not going to make everything okay. It's not. I care about the babies. I don't care what color you are. I don't care. And then one more thing before I get the fuck off this damn camera, y'all. One more thing. We got an issue in our community. I am all, I love girls. I love girls. I've been loving girls since I was in fucking elementary school. My first kiss was a girl. I'm not okay with forcing it, which they already doing it. We already know Disney Channel, Nick, they forcing us to get familiar with the new identity of things. It's so cool. I'm okay with it. But it's not okay to let them come into the school, come into the library and read transgender gay books. It's not okay. I mean, if you come from a home that is like that, I can see why it's okay. But you should make it an event bright type of a situation where people can sign up to register to have that type of environment. You should not automatically book that shit for people's schools. And hopefully you got parent consent to allow that type of behavior and character into your privacy zone. I understand that we, we, we signed our rights away every time we put a signature on something. I totally understand that our child is not our child because of the social security card and the birth certificate. 
totally get it all that great stuff kudos you got me fucked up though fuck those documents because that shit could get burnt fuck all of that shit because at any at, at, at any fucking moment there could be a fucking solar storm and wipe that shit clean and now guess what we started all over again all over again so I, I say fuck all that shit for real that shit don't it bother me but it don't bother me but you you got me fucked up that's why they have parent teacher conferences that's why they got pta meetings and little do y'all fucking know they got fucking meetings in your district all the time it's just called research it google it go down there to dc go down wherever it is in what state you are there's councils there's meetings that they hold all the time about the shit that you can actually change there is just nobody's going to the meetings. Nobody of color is speaking for their community. They're not going there. And even if you are going there, good. Thank you. We appreciate that. But more people could definitely go. And people that are going should invite and post the information all over social media that, hey, there's a town meeting coming up. The governor's going to be there. The Senate's going to be there. The president's going to be there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, get your opinion. Get it out there. Because it matters, especially when you have drag queens, transgenders coming into the school, having story time. What the fuck? I'm all for it. I'm okay. I'm a fucking grown adult that can subconsciously, consciously know what the fuck is going on. The children are the easiest, most fucking people to just pick up stuff so quick and think it's uh, no. We still need children. We're still supposed to procreate. We're still supposed to do that. So everybody can't be fucking gay and be trans fucking gender. What the fuck? How are we supposed to make more babies if everybody's doing that? Y'all going to keep going to the clinic and getting sperm and getting it implanted in you? No, I want it the natural way. I want dick up inside of me. I want to feel like I'm making love. And then boom, now we got this lovely, beautiful baby out of love. I just don't want to stick a fucking tube up in me. Which it might, that's just my, how my life might go out. But that's not the point. There's still hope. With that being stated, we also got them trying to get the transgenders on certain type of sports teams and stuff like that. I was thinking in my head that at the end of the day, if I am sharing a locker room with a girl, that like other girls or other girls. It's almost the same thing as having a transgender girl in that room. You no longer have your body parts. Just mentally and emotionally, you're going through stuff in your head. But you got titties now. You got you got a V card now. So it's almost the same thing. You was just born a male and now you a female. Which in high school and middle school and elementary, that's so fucking early. That's early. So your parents got money. Your insurance is is you got the best insurance in the world for you to be going through all of that shit. To be honest. Cause that ain't for us. We just got gays and straights and LGBTQ and some more letters. I heard there's more letters. I, I'm going to just stick with what the fuck I was raised up off of. Y'all got money. For all that still, some people going to feel some type of way. And the same thing for the guys because there are guys that like guys on football teams, on basketball teams. And that's the same thing as a girl that has now has no titties. And now she has a, a swinging baseball bat to be in that room. It's the same thing. Just mentally. And if y'all even knew this person before or after, y'all have an issue comprehending it. And she and he got to get that shit together too. But it's them. I think it's okay. I think it's okay because I feel like it's no different. It's the same thing. A guy in there, you're still with the other guys. He still might be looking. He still might be respectable. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool with that. It's family. Laugh, key, cat. Just don't cross certain limits. Like, don't. You know what I'm saying? But on the team, you smack asses. You want to fantasize that shit on the low by yourself? Cool. Do that shit. Just don't, you know, all the time be telling me about the shit. But 
hey, it is what it is. I don't know how y'all talk, but I, I've been around it. So it's, it's love. It's nothing but love. I'm all for it. I'm okay with it. But for the children that's still uncomfortable and with the parents that's uncomfortable with that too, I mean, if you allowing fucking drag queens to read to your fucking 12-year-old, not even 12-year-old, because you wouldn't do that. You're letting them do reading time or story time with the people underneath 10, underneath 8. You ain't bringing no fucking drag queen to no middle school. You're not bringing no fucking drag queen to fucking high school. You're bringing it to the elementary school. So what does that tell you? Because I know what the fuck is telling me. In fucking middle school and high school, we got transgenders already in the school. You got money. And that's not really in most of our communities, to be honest. We just got regular gay and bisexuals and lesbians. And gay means happy. Look it up. Because we all had this debate in high school and middle school. I'm, I'm a 2000 baby. I'm a 90s baby and I'm an 80s baby. And I'm a little bit of 60s, 70s baby. And I'm all of that. So, um, yeah, there's a lot to think about. And our generation in our 20s, in our 18s and 30s that have fucking got children better get more active in your children's life and in their school and stop letting your children kind of grow up on their own. Because it's, we opened our legs. We pushed these little lovely, beautiful leaders out. We need to make sure we take care of them because who the fuck is going to take care of you when you're older? And if you misguide them, and it's okay, I'm not saying it's going to be all perfect and shit like that, but do your best. That's all I'm saying is do your best. Put your job aside sometimes and go to those meetings at the school. Put getting your dick appointment and go handle your child's homework or make sure that they are thinking about a business idea or thinking about, you know, what job. Get them thinking about that shit now. What do you want to be when you grow up, little Tommy or little fucking, you know, Aaron or, you know what I'm saying, Deontay, DeAndre? Like, figure out what little Marion <laughs> wants to be in life. Figure it out now. It's better that way. Because what they're doing is like pro putting that shit already in their motherfucking head. And it's really sad, it's scary as fuck, and it's annoying. And I think that also they should build sports teams outside of the school. I understand they probably want a sports academic scholarship and all of that shit, but baby, sometimes you're not going to get everything that you fucking want. Welcome to the sex fight that we have been having for a very long time women just got their rights not too long ago men had to already go through shit before we even got there and then it was black white latino fucking amish jews like you know what i'm saying everybody had their fucking fight so join the fucking club get in line with the shit because it's not gonna be easy introducing some new type of sex into the lifestyle it's all due respect. We love y'all. We care. You do what you want with your body. But join the fucking club. But again, since the agenda movement, it's all about who pay up the most money. Y'all might have some people fucking outbeat. Because y'all got fucking more rules, I guess, passed across the border. Got more people apologizing for the shit that they say about y'all. And... It hasn't even been about y'all for a very long time. It's always been about fucking Caucasians and fucking North against fucking South. It's always been that way. It's always been about light skins and dark skins and black people or African-American people or African people by itself or indigenous people to this land have been going through fights and shit about that. And we barely have gotten any apology, but one comedian, one fucking music artist, one whatever do one thing, don't include y'all or include y'all and you don't like it. And they on the fucking news apologizing about the shit as a female, as a mixed breed, as a person that's fairly educated, I don't give a fuck, to be honest. Love y'all like shit. Love the shit out of y'all. But I don't give a fuck. 
Because it's other shit that's going on that nobody's really paying attention to, barely helping out with. And y'all want to fucking sit here and get all soft hearted and fucking all tight in your asshole about some shit that's not going to change shit for real. Keep living your best fucking life and keep it fucking pushing at the end of the day. We got fucking Rodney King situations repeating all over again. We got fucking Jim, Jim Crow shit going on and all this extra shit. And y'all fucking worried about being accepted when you were already accepted. Now it's just, can you force it on people? Or force it on children? When that, the children should not be a part of that shit. They should come into terms with it on their own. And there's documentaries and everything out there with them saying like, my mom and my dad made this choice for me and then I regret it face ass. Parents don't be making no choices for your child when they fully have not fully understood what the fuck is going on in this world. Don't do that. That's rude. That's disrespectful. Now they got to live with that for the rest of their life. And now they want to be back normal. Who wants to keep going underneath the knife? Because I know I don't. That's just, it's not fucking fun. I don't like my body being tampered with. Y'all got a lot of stuff to think about. And this is just for y'all to think, to be honest. And this is definitely for my generation, my younger generation, and my older generation to, you know what I'm saying, get back into the program of, we got all the power in our hand, but are we using it correctly? Like, life don't have to be as hard as we making it, but we make it that way sometimes. And I'm still fairly blessed. I'm excited, but... I just had to get all of this off because within the past two days, and it's only fucking Wednesday, it's just been a lot going through my head with me, like, being handicapped and wanting to do more for myself so I can do more for my community and do more for, you know, the public. And it's not fucking easy. It's difficult as fuck. Like... One minute they saying, preserve yourself, watch who you hang around, and no matter what, it's like, you always going to be around some individuals you really don't want to be around, but it's the strength and the courage and the bravery that, like, allows you to still be around these people to get your goal done. You don't have to technically like someone to work with someone. I have a goal, you have a goal. You trying to get a check, I'm trying to get a check. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You want to be well known? I don't even really want to be well known. I just want to help people. And with helping people, I'm going to be well known within those people that I helped. That's good enough for me. I'm not trying to be on fucking TV, all that extra shit. Because you telling me I got to watch what I say? (sighs) Yo, baby, you got the right one. You got the right one. That's why y'all don't really like me already. And I I don't care. I'm, I really don't care. <laughs> Drinking my lemon water. I really don't care. I don't care if you don't want to be my friend. I don't care. Okay? But what I do care about is just me, myself, and I. That's what I care about and what I feel like my morals and my ethics are since you want to give us these words and unethical and unmoral and uh, principles of life. And we made the world based off of the Bible. Well, some of y'all ain't acting like it. And I hate, I really hate these people that want to call that I am so-called... super strongly biblical but yet you do a lot of evil stuff and you can barely control yourself i'm spiritual i have a spirit i have a soul i am a vessel i'm spiritual that does not mean that i'm fucking a hundred percent 
on my P's and Q's and always fucking bubbly and always happy and always saying hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, yes, Yahweh. No. I'm still human. I still come with trauma. I'm still learning. I'm still retaining stuff. And I just see where it can all end up, but not sure. Because nothing really goes the way that you truly, truly plan it out. I mean, yeah, hard work, dedication, and that's something else that it just brings it brings me back to. At the end of the day, I became I used to pray. And one of my I remember this me praying. I prayed for a lot of stuff, especially growing up. My life wasn't that tough, but I was like, dang, I wanted to get better. Especially, you know, watching a single mother. And we wasn't always living in apartments or condos. We was mostly living in houses. So then it was definitely more help going on. But, you know, it was almost like she was still doing a lot of things on her own. But still, we had help. I'm going to say we definitely had help. Um... My first prayer was on my driver's license. I want to be independent and want to ask people to help me get around, you know. I was just ready to get a job so I can just put money in my mom's pocket, put money in my pocket, save up, get my own place. Um, That was my first prayer. And I prayed. I did study. And I didn't pass. And I was upset. I was like, I thought, you know what I'm saying? And before then, I was already going to church on and off, you know. And I prayed. And I was upset. Like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you not answering my prayer? Like, I thought this is what you do. But I studied more. I guess I studied harder. And I passed. And it was like still thank you but i kind of came into terms that it's not just all about me praying like i can pray all day long but if i don't put that action in and conjure up what it is that i want it's not gonna happen it's just not gonna fall in my lap like that like you can pray all day long but if you don't make the right steps and the right moves or if you don't make no moves at all You're not getting what you prayed for. You still have to put yourself out there in order for your prayer to come true. And I learned that. And I was like, I think that's probably why I struggled with praying in the first place is because praying, praying and then pray. It's like I'm 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 just praying on these words, you know, to to happen without me doing much but it's not true so you still gotta make your affirmations you still gotta you know create your manifestations you still gotta do all of those things but you gotta make sure you put yourself out there and continue to pick up the book or continue to go to work and continue to make certain deals with yourself and with companies you know put yourself in uncomfortable positions to make it happen I do. I think the gods all the time and thank the goddesses and thank the universe for everything. But I have to still do more, you know, in order to make it come true. And I also learned something else because I think I didn't pray that much the following year. And I just extremely studied a lot because we had a test every week and it had to be 80 percent or higher in order to pass and I didn't I was on my way to having a car sometimes I drove my mom's car sometimes I didn't but mostly I was on the bus and train so I had nothing but time to study on my way to school on my way home from school you know on the bus I fell asleep studying shit booked and fell out my hand underneath the fucking seat Because all I did was study and I passed. I don't think there was one freaking test that I failed, you know, 
or had to retake. Maybe I probably missed one, but I passed each time with an 80 plus. And my last final test passed flying colors. Didn't have to do it again. And my state board first time passed. Didn't have to retake it either. Like so easy, so swift. The determination, the consistency, the effort I put in. That's what actually made me realize, like, damn, if I just, like they say, stay determined, stay consistent, stay focused. You know, if I just do that with every single thing that I want in life, I can have anything. And yes, if I'm a sweetheart to people or I'm really authentic or myself, but make other people feel important, I can have anything, After I built these relationships with myself and with others. And I still have to, of course, give thanks to the supreme being and the most high. And, you know, all the energies working with me and not against me. Of course, I am really gracious and I am appreciative. But y'all, it really starts with us putting our best foot and our best thought forward. And it doesn't get no more simple than that. And I know it'll probably be years from now where this video fucking reaches like thousands, millions of views. If not, okay, cool. But the few people it do reach, and this shit is like an hour long, I hope it helps. I hope it helps your family, your associates, your friends, your enemies. I hope it helps because we need people, I feel like, like myself and like you to care about our youth and about our 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 90s babies, our Gen X's, our Gen Z's, our Gen whatever the fuck is coming next. Like, I need everybody to care about our 80s babies, you know, went through the fucking crack pandemic and what they feel like and I need us to care about our 70s generation and the 60s and 50s that are still here with us today like I need us to continue to care to still have respect but still have that level of consciousness and understanding that they didn't have access to what we had access to so giving them the benefit of the doubt and being more lenient on your parents and your grandparents you know it's it's given because they couldn't retain what we have now they was forced not to so we're really more gifted and prepared for certain things that they would never have been prepared for and we are their strength we are their rock and we need to continue to level up but i know most of y'all probably seen that fucking video with the lady standing up with the torch and it was like protect your fucking energy and you got these little wild ass animals coming towards them and she beating the shit out that motherfuckers we still got to do that too we'll let them know that i can see and i can smell the stench of just evilness coming from you and as much as i will either come down to your fucking level and fuck your ass up or I'm going to stay on my high pedestal and stay fucking pretty and beautiful. And I have to even remind myself that because I was a little nasty yesterday. And we're going to have our days. But this is me doing self-reflection too. That I am just too honest and it's hurtful and it's painful. Because I'm not going to sit here and I hate really like all the way leading people on. Or people just expect so quickly that we're going to be a thing. And we're not going to be anything. Because I'm not ready to be anything with no one. Because I don't feel I don't feel like it's right. I just don't feel like it's right. When it's right, my body and my soul and everything will know. And it will tell me. But it's hard to just be so upfront and honest with a person of what it is that they're looking for and then just the whole backtrack of where you come from where you're going that'd be a lot too and it's it's hard to give all that information to someone because now they're armed with so much and now you're either always on the offense or defense of things 
And shout out to those people that was able to have those strong conversations with people and they didn't take advantage of you. Because I don't want to be taken advantage of. And we already got enough of that going on on a daily basis, to be honest. And the person that I'm sleeping with take advantage of me. That's like the most hurtful, painful thing anybody can go through is to be gaslighted, manipulated, and I'm giving my body to you. No. Either we have an upfront understanding agreement, contract, or we don't have much at all. And I like contracts, unfortunately, because it's going to hold you to your duties and responsibilities. And I think that's just the way that why I move the way that I move. Because at the end of the day, I don't want your extra emotions. I don't want your mental body. I mean, your mental status. I literally just want some of this. And I'm happy. I'll put up with a whole bunch of shit. And that's our contract right there. Me putting up with your shit while I get this. And then if I feel like I'm not getting paid enough or getting enough benefit or getting enough gifts from you, I'm out of there. Because at the end of the day, if you want a certain type of response from me, you just got to, I don't know. Like My mind, how I work with different people is just like, it is what it is. You get whatever you get. And I apologize in advance to a lot of different people because I call myself a roller coaster. Love me, hate me some days, respect me, disrespect me some days. But one thing I'm not going to allow is for you to put your hands on me because I don't put my hands on nobody. And if I do... Some of this toxic shit rub, rub, rubbing off. But I don't put my hands on people. I let you do that first so I can defend myself properly. So, I'm just saying, be careful out there, y'all. I'm all about self-defense and protection and safety. I'm a firearm lover. I'm an arts lover. And I just want people... To live their best life, protect themselves with knowledge, weapons, and finances. And I think that concludes our story time of the day with me. I feel like I got a lot of stuff off my chest and out my head. And then I got to post these videos on YouTube. Instagram and my anchor account so those are my three platforms that I uh, I get to just let it all out and this is nowhere near gonna be what anchor is gonna have I wish anchor could take little videos well they don't and now anchor allows you to post on tiktok so that's a little cool but ironic not to see how that works but i'll figure it out i am i'll figure it out and i hope y'all figure it out too because we this whole we are the continent the continent is us and we are the people i mean i am you and you are me so brothers and sisters friends and family, associates and enemies. Y'all have a lovely, lovely day. And I'm going to see y'all around. And I know, I ain't make my we made everything post. I'm like two, three days behind in that. But happy indigenous month, y'all. Let the shit begin. <laughs>